What's up, guys? David Hater 1212, and it's List Day. <laughs> Where are they? Why? Why am I talking like the Joker and Batman? Uh, because it's 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 Primal Origins Day. Yes, we're back to the top ten best cards in every main set of the game, and we're finally to to like the the uh, super villain origin story set. I don't know why. I, I think it's the word association with origin is literally the only thing. <laughs> Primal Origins is actually an exciting set for me, pretty much because this is the last bastion of good Yu-Gi-Oh. After this, it's all bad. Boo! I want to quit because I think next is Duelist Alliance, which changes the the game forever. Boomer aside, let's get started. Number ten, baby, uh, is Medolta Angeli. Angeli, Angeli. Level four Earth Fairy monster. Because what else would it be? One thousand attack, one thousand defense. What do you contribute this card? Special summon one Medolce monster from your deck, and if you do, it cannot be destroyed by battle, but you shuffle it back into your deck at the end of the turn. That will never happen. <laughs> you can only use this effect of this card once per turn, and if this thing in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect and sent to your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck. Do I know how to play Medolce's? <laughs> No, but what I do know is an extender when I see one also a starter after a fashion Although it's just a one-for-one -one trade so whatever you got to get has got to also get a guy Is that hoot cake? Is hoot cake the one you search with this? I Vaguely remember the idea of summoning any monster from the archetype you're using from your deck Even at the cost of the monster you summoned is very <laughs> Very good. Tons of decks in this game would absolutely love the ability to cherry pick the monster that they want, and giving us a monster that allows us to get to those monsters is just one more way to get the old engine started. Number nine! It's a dragon! Number 62, Galaxy Eyes Some Word Soup. Can't find them, there's only soup. What do you mean there's only soup? It means there's only soup. Well then get out of the soup aisle! All right, you don't have to shout at me! They're all like this. It's all galaxy eyes, photon, dragon, galaxy, dragon, photon, bouncer. <laughs> galaxy eyes, prime, photon, dragon. It's it's always been just number 62 to me because I don't want to learn that word soup. There's more soup. What do you mean there's more soup? There's just more soup. What do? Rank 8 light dragon XC monster. Very cool. 4,000 attack power. Holy shit. That's a Big number. 3k defense. Two level 8 monsters makes this thing. It's generic. If this card battles during damage calc, ooh. Quick effect, ooh. You can detach one material from this card. This card gains attack equal to the combined rank of all monsters on your side of the field times 200 during that damage calc only. So you turn that 4k into even bigger number. And if he's the only XC monster you have on the board, he at least gets what, like 1600 attack? Yeah. Damn it's cool. That's still 56k. That's big. So if you have this guy next to any other XC monsters, you can you can make this thing freaking huge. It also has a recursion effect, which is neat because it kind of gives you the the essence of what a more modern monster looks like. So this has got some this has got some future proof into it. It's slow AF though. If it's got Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon as material, if this thing's destroyed by your opponent's card effect, you can special summon it during your second standby phase and then double its attack. Yeah, that's coming back a lot of turns later. But the fact that it does, it's kind of like DPE, kinda, not really, it kinda. And it's coming back with AK attack, that's absolutely huge. However, if this thing doesn't have Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon as one of its current materials, you have all the damage done by it. So, uh, it'll come back with no materials, and then it'll, uh, not do all damage. But AK is still freaking huge, it's world ending. Just change skill drain. <laughs> Number eight! My, my personal favorite on the, on the list. Number 103, Ragna Zero. Remember, I played this against a Zodiac player. He wasn't happy. He was, he was like, boo. <laughs> Rank four Water Fairy Monster, 2400 attack, 1200 defense. Ah, an actual Xea era rank four. Always, always chasing that 2500 attack power cap. Made of two level four monsters. Once per turn during either player's turn, quick effect, yas. You can detach one material from this card to target one monster on the field whose attack is currently different than its original attack. 
That's your opponent controllers. You can't pop your own stuff. Don't be cheeky. Don't be cheeky. Destroy that target and then draw a card. Ooh. That's good card advantage right there. This was actually a pretty solid tech against things like Fire Fist, when, because when Tanky's on the board, everyone got a boost. It's like Oprah's here. And uh, then the deck gets all the pops. Pretty solid. However, it does work against things like, I don't know, Dweller? Or if you're, I don't know, an idiot playing like a card on your side of the field that lowers your opponent's attacks. What a stupid combo. <laughs> It's almost like I like these cards. I love this thing. I think the fact that you can quick effect pop a card on your opponent's side of the field and then draw a card, uh, it'd be okay if it was just the pop. The draw is insult to injury. This thing's actually very, very good. And it's really the only reason why it doesn't see play anymore is because it's a little bit format dependent. And also we've gotten so many good rank fours and then things like links that our extra decks just aren't big enough to put all the cool crap in. If you need a rank four, you just put in Castell, right? And, and just hope it's enough. <laughs> All right, it wouldn't be the Xeer era without some dumb Bujin card appearing on the list. And this one is Bujinki Amaterasu. Um, Amaterasu, yeah, Amaterasu, right? That's that's probably close enough. Rank four, light beast warrior monster, 2600 attack, 2500 defense. Uh, three level four monsters, ew. That's eh, all right. You can only control one of these things. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach one material from this card and then pick an effect depending on whose turn it is. That's... That's a weird effect if you think about it. Not a lot of stuff does that. If it's your turn, target one of your banished level four monsters and special summon it. If it's your opponent's turn, you can target one of your banished level four monsters and add that monster to your hand. Obviously it's a little difficult to make because it's three level fours, but the decks that you would play this in, that is not a very big deal. And summoning things from your banished pile or adding them back to your hand has utility in the kinds of decks that you would use to make this thing. So this is kind of one of those effects that you play in your extra deck in order to kind of reset your deck and get things kind of moving again or extend your plays out so you can summon to something again. It's just one of those uh, innocuous mid-combo cards. It doesn't look particularly impressive, but it's, its actual utility makes a lot of things go. Jordy make ship go. We look for things to make us go. Uh, fellas, why don't you just show me where your guidance system is, okay? He is smart. Boojins, people, Boojins. Number six, Phantom Fortress Enterblathnir. Just made up a word, Jerome. Is that the name of the hand? Is Potato Hand's name Jerome? Oh no. <laughs> Not if you want to get like every copyright claim ever! Bah! Shut up, Jerome. Rank 9? Huh. <laughs> Weird. Wind Machine! 2900 attack, 2500 defense. Two level 9 monsters. What deck even makes this? Is it Blue Eyes with Cloud Castle? <laughs> like, what deck makes 9s? 9's a weird level. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card. I mean, it doesn't exceed monster, right? They're all gonna say that. Then activate one of these effects. Ooh, versatile. Banish one card your opponent controls. Just BLS them, that's nice. Banish one random card from your opponent's hand. Ooh, Trishum. Banish one card from your opponent's graveyard. It's, it's Trish. You can make this with Trish. Banish one card from the top of your opponent's deck. That one specifies face up. I wonder why. Make as a card is face down. Do you think anyone's ever used that, that last one? Like ever in the history of Yugi Mans? Cause it's not good. It's it's such an absolute waste. Unless it's like turn 30 and your opponent's top deck in next turn, you're just being an asshole. I don't know why you'd ever use that one. Other than being kind of stuck in a, a, a particularly weird deck in that it's there is like no decks that can make this thing cause it's level nines. Grenade, Grenadier, Grenadier, Nerners? Are they eights or nines? I don't remember. But yeah, I think it's Blue Eyes with Cloud Castle and that's about it. But it's got some versatile effects. Being able to banish practically a card Anywhere you want to banish one from is really slick, especially the hand. Knocking a card out of your opponent's hand, that's some rare Yugi Man's effects right there. I like this. This is cool. It's also an aircraft carrier. I, I think it's supposed to be the Enterprise. But not like the Starship Enterprise. This is the Phantom Fortress. Overall, pretty solid monster. Number five. Care Gorgon, the anti-luminescent knight. Neat, what do? Rank four dark rock monster. Because why isn't it a warrior? I truly don't know. It's a rock. Two level four monsters. It's generic, as of its course it is. Man, the rank four pool is just banger after banger, right? Man, that's some pretty biased favorability right there. 2450 attack, 
<laughs> Ew. 1950 defense. Rest in peace anyone keeping track of life points in their head. During either player's turn, when another card or effect is activated that targets exactly one other card on the field, and no other cards, you can, apparently mistiming, I never would have thought of that, detach one material from this card, then target another card on the field that would be an appropriate target for the card's activation you're chaining to, and change the target to that. It's uh, basically fairy's hand mirror, but in a monster. Why is that good? That sounds terrible. And in a bubble it is. As long as your opponent's like targeted effect says just destroy a card, you can change it to one of their guys and have them blow up their own stuff. And that's big funny. Or just switch it to like an MST from the back row you don't want to get blown up to your bluff card because uh, they didn't fall for it. So now you can at least redirect it. No, you're supposed to hit the other one. Stop it. But at a base level, basically what you're doing is just turning one of your opponent's card effects into something that they didn't intend it to be, which is effectively like a negate. It's kind of like Durandal being used as a negate, because it's it's basically turning your opponent's effect into something they didn't want to, and that's, that's almost as good. This is easier to make though, and that's pretty slick. I don't know why he'll rock though. It's a rock. He's literally a knight. He's an anti-luminescent knight. <laughs> He's like a luminescent stone, but anti. He's just a doll rock. Number four, the monarchs erupt. You know what I hate? True Draco. You know what I hate almost as much? Their prequel, the monarchs. <laughs> Continuous trap card, ew. Activate this card only if you control no cards in your extra deck and also control a tribute summoned monster. Not a big lift. Negate the effects of all face-up monsters on the field while <laughs> yeah, while those monsters are face-up on the field, except Tribute Summoned Monsters, gross, it's skill drain. However, during the end phase, if you control no Tribute Summoned Monsters, you blow this thing up. So at least, uh, at least there's that. You know what Yu-Gi-Oh! is really centered around? Monster effects. You know what sucks when you turn them all off? Monster effects. You know what people hate you for negating? Monster effects. No, it's even worse. This doesn't say it needs to be a monarch. It could just be a tribute summoned monster. Ugh. It's very strong though. That's why everyone hates it. Majesty's Fiend, son of a bitch. I remember liking this set. Level six light fiend monster with 2,400 attack, 1,000 defense. They did that on purpose. The real question is, did they make the Klees have these stats too on purpose? Like everyone's been trying to figure that out since like they came out. They're like, why do they have monarch stats? They don't really work very well with monarch cards. This card says cannot be special summoned. <laughs> sure. Neither player can activate monster effects. Stop it. This one doesn't negate monster effects. It just prevents you from activating them, which is interesting. Academically speaking, that's neat because continuous effects and continuous like effects can still be active. Like Jinzo still works, I guess. But monsters that have to activate their effect to do it their effect, they can't use it. And that's primarily most monster effects because most continuous like effects are things like attack boosts and who cares. I don't want to play against tribute some index. Ugh. Man, the top of this list is all the unfun cards. Artifact Scythe! Yeah, we got artifacts in this set. Oh man, artifacts when they came out, they were just cool. No one was like, boo, those things suck. Get that shit out of here. No, they were like, artifacts are cool. You put, they're monsters, but you put them in the back row like they're spelling traps, and when your opponent goes to blow them up, they're like, surprise, motherfucker. And you slap them on the field, and then they do a thing. That's cool card design. An artifact sanctum is a pretty solid trap card that just grabs one from the deck, so you don't have to rely on your opponent to do a thing, because that's always bad. And if your opponent keeps slapping at your back row, even blowing up that trap card punishes your opponent. Man, nothing makes you nervous to use an MST like a bunch of artifacts. But then we got Dagda and he ruined the whole thing. That guy's a dick. What does Artifact Scythe do? Level five light fairy monster like the rest of them. 2000 attack, 900 defense. You can slap this thing in the back row like it's a spell or trap card. During your opponent's turn, if this set card is destroyed and sent to your graveyard, special summon it. Then, as a separate effect, so that the trap card still works, if this card is special summoned during your opponent's turn, your opponent cannot summon from their extra deck for the rest of the turn. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so good. At least Scythe doesn't say you can't do it ever. 
it's not an entire complete floodgate, it's just for the turn. So that's normally fair. And that's pretty debilitating, because in a format where everyone's playing links and synchros and all the other extra deck cards, uh, telling your opponent no pretty much prevents them from doing practically anything. A lot of decks, their main deck monsters are really only geared to make extra deck monsters, and those extra deck monsters are the things that actually do things. So, being able to tell your opponent no, what they're gonna do. T-set pass, and the fact that it can be summoned by its own effect or by the effect of the trap card means that you can slap it down on the field mid-opponent combo to really, really screw them up. That's good interruption. Stupid deck. <laughs> All right, before we get to number one, we got our sponsor, TCG Player. Use my link, buy some cards, play some Yugi Mans. We actually have tournaments now, at least at a local level. I think we're still trying to get some of them regionals going. You know, uh, it's a good time to actually get back on the real Yu-Gi-Oh wagon. All right, here we go, honorable mention. The honorable mention is Mecha Phantom Beast Oh lion Oh, oh, lion Oh, lion Damn. You watch those nature documentaries on the cable? Yeah. You see the one about lions? Level 1 Wind Machine Monster with uh, tiny, tiny stats of 600 attack, 1000 defense. That says, while you control a token, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. Do you remember it does that? Or card effects. <laughs> does that ever matter? <laughs> if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can do the following effect, the one anyone cares about. Special Summon a Mecha Fan Beast token, which is a, a level one, a level 3, really. Zero, zero attack defense. And you can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon one of your Mecha Phantom Beasts from your hand. So that's also cool. Okay, so why is it banned? Well, <laughs> I don't really know. I imagine there's a card in this game that can just summon tuners from the deck indiscriminately and then combo off with said tuners. Hmm, it's probably based on a future mechanic making this entry a bit anachronistic. I, I can't quite put my my finger on it every fiber of my being can't think of the card and then when you send it to the graveyard you get a token back and that is very solid card advantage so you can go even further beyond very good card but it didn't really see its its major use until much later dishonorable mention is jackpot seven <laughs> boo gimmicky win con this card is useless Jackpot 7 is a weird little spell card that says, when activated, shuffle this card back into the deck. That is butterfly dagger Elma levels of just useless spell activation. <laughs> just, just play it, shuffle it, play it, shuffle it. Yeah. Well, its second effect says, if this card's sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can banish it from the graveyard. And then if you've got three of these things banished, you win the duel. Nice. It's gotta be banished by its own effect though. You can't banish it with like a uh, gold sark to be a cheeky f I don't really know why you'd wanna shuffle it back in your deck. I, I Maybe the intent was that, I don't know, you, you can't activate it against your opponent's macro cosmos and just cheese a victory or something. I, I don't know why it, it carries this activation can, uh, uh, effect. However, you can abuse its activation effect with the wombo combo used to, to win with it. If you give your opponent a monster via something like Creature Swap, and that monster is that Dark Scorpion Burglar's card, you can crash a bunch of goat tokens into it, and those goat tokens will make you take the battle damage, activating Burglar's effect, which allows you to banish a card from your deck, in which you, you banish this thing, and then you crash a goat, and then you crash another goat, and you've won the game. And like, because of that effect, it makes you think that its first activated effect is to help facilitate this. Because if you draw it, you can't get it with the goat crash. So this lets you put it back in the deck for the goat crash. But like, that can't be, the, that can't possibly be what Jerome and the other guys at Konami R&D had in mind when this card was being created. There, there is literally no way. Crashing goats for the win! All right, number one's a card that I, I think I in the past uh, said was a very bad XE monster because it was. And then links happened and then it became an extremely good XE monster literally overnight. 
And that's, that's the fun thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! Because we don't have rotating set lists, any card can be good if uh, some dumb thing gets released in the future. This is a great example. Rank 7 Wind Machine Monster! What do? Two level 7 monsters, it's generic, and it's a rank 7, which is one of the better rank pools. Uh, we have the Dragon Rulers and things like that. There's a lot of good decks that can make rank 7s, just like rank 4s. It's one of the better pools, so being a rank 7 is to its benefit. Once per turn, you can detach two materials from this card to summon as many Battle Eagle tokens, apparently, as you possibly can. Uh, level 6, 20... 100 to 2000. 2000 is uh, not wrong, could be more right though. But you destroy them during the end phase and your opponent uh, takes no further battle damage this turn. So the fact that you got a bunch of 2000 attack power monsters, uh, you can't OTK with them. Oh no, this card sounds terrible. Uh, except you can link summon with all those free bodies you just got. That is so dumb. I feel bad for Mecha Phantom Beast. This isn't explicitly a Mecha Phantom Beast card. It doesn't summon Mecha Phantom Beast tokens, but it is a wind machine plane and it summons tokens. It's very clearly supposed to be a pseudo support card for that deck. And that deck just keeps getting its crap banned because of links. <laughs> all right, guys, that was the list. That was Primal Origins, uh, man. The next set, though, is, is might be one of the, the most influential sets in the game. So, uh, I salute you, uh, Ixia Era. You brought us a lot of fun. We had hat format and things, and all that was very, very cool. I shall miss you. But uh, uh, next, we get the pendulums. The dark times before the empire. I'll see you guys next time.